Welcome to another episode of the Miami Real Estate Show. Today, I have the pleasure to interview the Director of Sport and Entertainment Division for One Sotheby's, Ben Moss. Ben is a top producer with over $112 million in current listings. During the interview, we learn how to Ben has broken into the uh, luxury market and the entertainment and sports industry, working with those high, high earners, entertainers and athletes. What does it take to really break into that luxury market? He talks about three very important things. Number one, having a system in your business, not only to grow, but out automate your practice. He talks about the importance of having a business plan where you not only have the business plan, but you can also execute and review it in a consistent basis. And finally, among the many things we learn from Ben, he talks about having a referral network, key to the success in his business. The insights you're about to hear from Ben are just amazing. A very short, but very, very dense interview that you can miss. Without further ado, I leave you with the director of the sport and entertainment division for One Soda Bees and top producer, Ben Moss. Make it a very, very productive day. Take care, guys. This week's feature properties are a custom designed place in Lazy Bee Ranch, located at 5510 Southwest 70 Avenue, Davie, Florida. This residence features five bedroom, four and a half bathroom, huge open floor plan, and a resort like pool with expansive summer kitchen, indoor outdoor fireplaces. The main residence sets on a pond and includes top finishes like Blue Louie, Blue Macaba, and Royal Oyster Marbles. Full Crestron Lutron AV system with 20 cameras and a separate structure for 12 car garage with 1,800 square feet, barn with three stalls and guest groomers quarters. And a luxurious lifestyle, security, and tranquility of nature residency, the resort, located at 9405 Old Cutler Lane, Coral Gables, Florida, is part of an exclusive community called Journey's End. Expansive master suite with sitting room and private balcony overlooks manicured grounds, pool, 10 person spa, babbling brook, and koi pond. The seven bedroom, seven and a half bathrooms house, 28 foot, has a slip for a 40 foot boat, media room, sunroom, two wet bars, lounge, open kitchen, billiards room, family room, elevator, and private lawn bordered by a tropical canal leading to Biscayne Bay. For more information, contact top producer Ben Moss at 305 793 4783. Welcome to another episode of the Miami Real Estate Show. Today, I have the true pleasure to interview Ben Moss. Ben, thank you very thank much you, for I coming. I appreciate ben that. is the, uh, thank you very much, the uh, Managing Director for the Sports and Entertainment Division for One Sotheby. So it's a true pleasure and thank you for having me in your beautiful offices in, in Coral Gables. I appreciate the um, opportunity to interview with you. Yeah. Great job, Maggie, did with the, with the offices. She, Maya is the best. <laughs> she, <laughs> she really is, is in every a, respect. <laughs> a lot of respect for Maya. You're right. So let's get started. All right. uh, what's your background? Uh, why real estate and, and how long have you been doing? How, how long have you been in the business? I originally wanted to be a developer, okay. probably a lot of people do, and mm -hmm. uh, went to one of those real estate investment seminars okay. when I was in college, started knocking on doors, okay. and flipped a house, almost by mistake, made so some you money. Did. Yeah, made mm -hmm. some money, and I said, man, this is a lot of money for, at the time. What I didn't realize at the closing table, the guy that I flipped it to flipped it to somebody else, who flipped it to somebody else, okay. so there were a lot of people in the closing room, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I made the least money, but it was a great experience because I learned this is a very entrepreneurial business, yes. and you know, I made a mistake because I didn't make enough money, but I was able to still get myself more than I was making at the University of Miami Library at the time. <laughs> okay, so right, it was, right. I was very happy. Yeah. And you but, mentioned to me, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. And you mentioned to me that, that you were in the commercial real estate. Yeah. So sure. after college, I got into commercial real estate. I was with a company called Taylor and Mathis. Of course, a huge and, company. Uh, yeah, yeah. And landlord leasing and had a great mentor, uh, loved it, got into residential real estate almost by mistake. But I did that for five years. For five years, for and five how years. do you make the transition? What did you learn from, from, from commercial that helped you in the transition into residential real estate? Because I want to say something yeah. right now that I didn't mention at the beginning. Right now, you have over 30 listings, right? right? Valued at $112 million, yes. okay? I gotta sell those, but huh? yeah, I gotta sell You gotta sell, sell them, but it's <laughs> over $100 million in listings right, right. now, over 30, you, you were the luxury uh, market, 
and and how that is that knowledge that you acquire from commercial real estate you were able to capitalize and bring into res residential real estate. Yeah, you know, in the commercial real estate world, you're dealing with institutional asset mm -hmm. managers, at least I was on the, on the landlord side. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, some managers had me report to them every week what was happening. And I hated Fridays for certain reasons because I had these Friday flashes that I had mm -hmm. to provide uh, for these... Uh, but that's structure. But it was structure, and right. I had to make the phone calls, and I had to do things to provide mm -hmm. the information to the institutional client, you know, met life. Right. If you don't, you don't mm -hmm. mess around with MetLife, you know, you give them what they want, otherwise <laughs> exactly. they fire you, they can right. move on to the next one. Right. So um, a lot of the things that I learned in the commercial side, the structure, the reporting have kind of helped me translate a lot of the, what I hope to be as a true professional in this mm -hmm. business on the residential side, which I think frankly is lacking a lot right. of times. So you, the, you, you brought the systems from commercial into residential. Yeah, kind I kind of, of created my own systems right. in the right. residential mm -hmm. side, but, but the idea that there have to be systems in place, that you have to communicate, you have to put it in writing, uh, you have to, I create my own market analysis. I don't use the, the CMA that they use on the MLS. Uh -huh, right. I do my own, it okay. takes longer, I create it on Excel, okay. but I really have to think. I write my own analysis out, and by the time I've done that, I really know the market and know the property and, and the sub-market that I'm in. Now, so. off camera, you were mentioned something, mentioning something extremely important. Uh, and I asked you, you know, how, how do a person like you or anybody else tap into that luxury market, yeah. working with athletes, with uh, you know, uh, entertainment figures, business, multi-million dollar you know, companies, own, uh, clients of yours own. And you talk about investing money and time and also working with rentals. Can you tell me a little yeah. bit about how do you get into that luxury market? And, and get to work with those very high net worth individuals? Well, that's a good question. I have a lot, I have, I believe you have to have a niche. Mm -hmm. You have to kind of have a plan, know what you're doing. So I have two niches. One is the luxury residential market, because mm -hmm. I feel like my marketing plan and my skill set is, is you know, well developed for that. And then also the sports and entertainment side. And they do cross over, but not always. So on the sports entertainment side, I was telling you off camera, I do a ton of rentals. Right. People have no idea. <laughs> right. That's People have no idea how many rentals I do and my, mm -hmm. my team does because mm -hmm. that's what helps build the relationships. Right. You can't just cherry pick, especially right. when you're dealing with business managers and, and people that are controlling some of these people. Mm -hmm. And they're and they're young, a lot of them are young athletes. Right. They they're very hard to deal with. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of times a little bit of ego. A little bit of ego. <laughs> uh, they don't know. They, right. There's no accountability. Right. They don't show up on time for showings. They don't the whole the whole gamut. I mean, you can you can understand, and so but there's a great crossover. And then as you develop those relationships, as long as some of them are loyal to you, mm -hmm. then you know it pays off because mm -hmm. a lot of them will sign their second third contracts. Then they'll buy the big house they've saved up. And what I like to do is help them all around the country. So I don't just help them here in South Florida, but I help them with their off season rental in Arizona. I help their mom buy a house or build a house in Mobile, Alabama. Yeah. They want to build a house in Charlotte, North Carolina. You know, like I've got my team and my structure with brokers and builders all around the country and I can advise them. And so I get a true passion out of advising them to help make the right long-term decisions so that they don't end up broke. Right. Do you finance a deal over five years or over 30 years? Well, what's your contract? Do you have a five-year contract? Very interesting. Interest mm -hmm. only, you know, there's a, lot, there's a lot of things that go into it. Right. How far away from the facility? Um, in the luxury market, it's, I've been blessed that, you know, my sphere of influence, the people that I associate with for the most part are people that own businesses that um, you know, that are buying luxury property, mm -hmm. but I also make it a point to always network and always, uh, and not network in the cheesy mm -hmm. sense of the I word, but just completely. be out, be social. Right. I like relationships, right. I like dealing with people. So it's just something that comes naturally. You mentioned two very important things. Number one, you have a team that helps yeah. you through the process, okay? And they're awesome, yeah. Through building the relationship. And number two, you mentioned off camera that if you have to go to another city and meet and have dinner with a, with a business yeah. manager, can you elaborate on that? You do that. You make that monetary investment sure, to sure. build that relationship, network. That you yeah, make. especially in the sports side, you know, those people are busy and, mm -hmm. and sometimes, you know, you kind of have to go to them. Exactly. So, you know, one example is I went to Nashville, mm -hmm. uh, Tennessee, not too long ago. I, you know, flew there, stayed in the hotel only to take out a sports agent to dinner because he's somebody that sends me a lot of business and that is my way of thanking him and right. having that personal connection. He can right. look in my eyes and know that I'm the real deal, I'm not a shyster, I'm gonna continue right. building that relationship with him. He can call me for a rental for his client, for a three month rental, or a $10 million sale. And he knows that I'm gonna treat the client the same way. Right. So yeah, so you have to get out, and I always have, whenever I travel, it's kind of a challenge. I mean, I wanna have fun, right. but I wanna do business, and good things happen. Right. You know, it's amazing. 
I think you just put it out there and good things happen, but it's strategic. I'm not just and, showing up. And very important for the agents that are listening to the interview or watching the interview right now, you said you want to have fun, but also if you have the opportunity to do business, you know, you, you take advantage of that opportunity. You yeah. mentioned off camera one of the cases when you went skiing, right? Yeah. And, and then, you know, somebody, you, re, you know. Yeah, you so I went to Park City earlier right. this uh -huh. year okay. on a Friday. I had a meeting at Friday at like four o'clock. Mm -hmm. After the meeting, I went right to the ski place, got my skis for the next day. Okay. Was out there on the mountain, skied until four. It was NF the NFL playoffs were on, so I went to the bar by my hotel, watched two NFL games, got up the next morning and, and went home. Okay. And, and it was great because I just got a call last night, actually, as I, I was mentioning to you off camera. Uh, one of those properties is now under contract. Okay. And so, you know, that was a successful trip because I got three listings there. Um, three listings? Yeah, right. three okay. listings. That, and that's what, what I, some of my notes here that it, it provides you with supplemental Yeah, good income. supplemental income. Those referral networks that exactly. you're building right now. Exactly. I think uh, one of the best decisions that I've ever made was mm -hmm. to really network with other realtors. Uh -huh. And realtors They're are not markets. your competition. They're not competition. Very good. I think there are, you know, you always have to watch your back in right. life. Right. But in this business, there are a lot of good people. And if you can kind of affiliate with them, right. and it doesn't matter what company they're with. I don't care if they're right. with Berkshire Hathaway or right. Telus Properties right. or... Sotheby's or right. Corcoran, it doesn't matter. Right. What I care about is the individual on the other side. Uh, and actually, my biggest sale ever mm -hmm. um, was, a, was a, a pretty nice sale on Miami Beach last year, and that was referred to me by a broker in the, in, uh, the Hamptons in New I'm York, right. who I had referred a client to probably five years ago. So I am actively engaged in my how, broker. How network. big that was sale? I'm sorry to interrupt you, and that's very important. How big that's, that was that sale? Uh, $25 million. $25 sale. million. Dollars. Yeah. And, I, and you were talking to me about how, how you had to structure that. But understand, this came from a relationship built five years ago where, you were, years ago, yeah. where you were giving something to the other agent, not expecting right. anything in return. Right. And then five years later, you have a $25 million sale. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying, networking with realtors in other markets. I'm marketing my properties to them, mm -hmm. but I'm also picking up the phone and saying, hey, how are you doing? Or when I'm in New York, hey, do you want to get together for a coffee or lunch? You know, it's, it's just relationships. Right. Um, yeah, so that's, I mean, I'm a big believer in that too. Definitely. It's, it's the, here's the big difference. Most people just want the quick sale, right? I go to New York, I visit you, send me business. Yeah. You don't send me business, all right, I don't call you anymore. Right. But understand, selling is not an event. It's a process, right? Yeah. Where you get to know me, you are aware of who I am, then you become educator how, I, how valuable I am to you in Miami. Yeah. And then, only then, after that process, you know, we go through that process, then you take action and send me business. Yeah, right? and I think a lot of the, the business that I've, I'm not somebody who's ever built my, my, my career uh, farming certain geographic areas. That's not a bad business model right. in the brokerage world. That's a good business model. Right. And I'm actually, I'm trying to focus a little bit more on, right. on doing some of that. But uh, up to now, what I've really done is, is nurture relationships. And I think, how do you do that? Well, the way I approach relationships is how can I help somebody? It's almost like the Keith Ferrazzi, um, never read alone mm -hmm. mentality. Right. I've read that book, right. but yes, it's, yes, I, I, I read that book and it resonated with me because that's kind of how I've been approaching business mm -hmm. always is how can I connect people? And I'm not keeping score. I mean, sometimes things come around. I feel like if you put good things out there, good things come back in, in life in relationships and business. It's all, it's all one and the same. Right. When we were in our coaching, in our coaching system, we say, you know, it's give value, give value. It's valuable information the more value you put out there it will come back yeah. to you not in different ways it will come back to you financially but you need to become that expert first you become an expert then you can promote as an expert and then you can show the people that you're an expert that can bring va yeah. value to them very yeah. very important Absolutely. point so you have a, a broker network I have in my in my notes mm -hmm. you also do a lot of since you were with such a high-end properties you sometimes have to be a little bit uh, creative. Yeah. And you mentioned something, one of your biggest sales in, in Miami, a $25, $25 million uh, sale. Can you explain a little bit of yeah, how you have to create? A, that's what I like about this business versus mm -hmm. the landlord leasing business on okay. the commercial side. All those deals are very structured. Right. You can only give a certain amount of tenant improvement dollars on a five-year lease term, mm -hmm. for instance. On the residential side, you're dealing with you know, very sophisticated people at, right. at these levels. So right. on that sale, we were $5 million apart. And five million, million is a lot, but it's not that much. Well, five million way. dollars is a very nice house in Miami. Right, but when you had a twenty-five <laughs> million dollar listing, I knew it, it for that type close of client, enough. it's yeah. not. And right. it was a unique property. I knew we were close enough, so I racked my brain for for like a good day or two trying to figure out how can I put this together. I can't lose this deal. I mean, this is huge, you know. Mm -hmm. Obviously, um, so 
I ended up being able to convince the buyer not to buy the real property, which is how most okay, transactions are right. done. But this was this was oh, this property was owned in an offshore corporation, and I knew that if I could, and I talked to some tax people, and you know, then approached the buyer and said, look. And I approached my seller too. I had to convince my seller first. Very that, interesting. Very pay attention. This is very interesting. Take a five. He wouldn't negotiate at all. Your seller. Your seller client. would not negotiate. Right. Twenty five million dollars. Twenty five million. That's what it's listed for. That's what I'm going to sell it for. I said, okay, uh -huh. fair enough. But if I can bring you a twenty million dollar offer where you pay no capital gains, it's the same thing as getting a twenty five million dollar sale. Great. Thinking. And he thought about that, and he he ultimately had to concede because I was right. <laughs> and, um, okay. and and it made sense for the buyer because the buyer was only paying twenty million. Right. But it's, it depends from which viewpoint. So right. I still think of it as a $25 million sale. Of course. The buyer thinks of it as a $20 million sale. Right. But uh, ultimately, I was able to save my client based on his uh, tax, uh, or his basis in the property, right. the amount equivalent to $5 million in capital gains taxes. Oh, and it was done legally above board. I mean, there were attorneys and high-end uh, tax people involved, and, and we got all the opinions and, and justifications for doing the deal that way. Right. And, and it worked out. So. So yeah, I mean, it, I, it just came to me in a moment of, of stillness and um, you know, I had to rack my brain though a little bit for it and it came. But th that, that's a key point and sometimes, and, and to close that, those type of transactions, sometimes you need to be very creative, help oh, yeah. the buyer, help, help the seller yeah. and everybody involved. Now, let me ask you a question. Uh, any book that you would recommend or audience? that you think will be of value to them. And I know you're a reader yeah, I'm a like big, me. So. I don't read enough. I don't okay. read as much as I would like to. Okay. It's usually like 20 minutes when I'm falling asleep and the book falls in my okay. face. And, that's, okay. and then I don't remember what I read, so I have okay. to start again the night before, the night, the night after. Um, but I mentioned Keith Ferrazzi, Never right. Alone. And the, the right. title put me off for a while. Well, it's a great book. But it's a great book. Right. And I definitely right. recommend that right. one. Uh, Think and Grow Rich okay. by Napoleon Hill really resonated to me because right. I... Classic. I, I believe in energy and I believe in what you right. put out there and, and mm -hmm. when you can kind of feel something, not just think about your goals, right. but feel your goals. Right. It's amazing how they happen. Um, and that's one thing I got from that book. Uh, and also know what your goals are, mm -hmm. you know, go through them every day. Right. And every your affirmations, single day. right? We talk about that and I always show my little paper right here. On how oh, you've got them written down? Every nice. single day. And it's, it's just so amazing. And here it is every wow. single day in coaching, which you teach everybody. This is not scripted, by the way. It's this not. Oh, look, <laughs> no, no, I'm saying, but like no, our exchange yeah, right yeah, here, yeah, like yeah, I didn't know you had your goals. Six, and it, 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 it teaches, it, it trains your brain to look exact, yeah. to tell your brain what to look for. It's, yeah. it's just reality. Yeah. So, yeah, very so that's, very, that's mm -hmm. another book, uh, obviously Millionaire Real Estate Agent yes, by Gary very Keller. Good, by Gary Keller. Yes. I only read it a couple years yeah. ago. I wish somebody had told me to it's read that very good 10 years book. ago when yeah. I was first getting started. Um, what about agents? What do you think are the, 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 the characteristics that makes a very, very good real estate agent? Well, I think there's a lot of things because we okay. have to, we have to juggle a lot of different skill sets, mm -hmm. which is what I really love. But I think the most important thing is you have to, to figure out, you have to figure out why are you in this business? You gotta love it, you gotta have a passion because- the why? Yeah, if you don't figure out the why and right. why you're doing it, and, and if it's money, then there's money in everything. Right. So it's not about the money. Um, I think it's about the passion. And, and, uh -huh. and so once you've kind of figured that part out, then you know, I think obviously you have to be organized because right. you have to market properties, you have to bring in business. Mm -hmm. You know, in the case, case of people that have a team, you have to kind of feed the team, right. keep them energized and, right. and engaged. You have to have high energy because uh, we work long days and, you know, seven days a week. Right. Um, you have to know how, when to pull the plug and, and, you know, not be working and right. spend time with your family because success to me isn't about how much money you make or how many deals you close. Right. It's about Hey, I'd rather make less money and spend more time with my family. Exactly. And and so it's just you know keeping it all in balance. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably the main thing is, if I had to pick one thing, it would be organization because right. you have to keep everything in balance and your business in balance mm -hmm. as well. So key. It's and and it's the the beautiful thing about organization. It's time, right? And we all have the same twenty four hours, yeah. seven seven days a week. Now the difference between the people that make a hundred thousand and a hundred million dollars a year. It's about the activities, right? Yeah. It's about organizing and leveraging. You mentioned your team. We can do it, do it alone. Right. And you have a team for that. Organizing your team, delegating so you can replicate. One thing that I learned a long time ago, my previous coach, I always had coaches. Okay. People, I think it's much easier to, it's much easier to ask who can help me yeah. instead of asking how can I do it, right? right? It's much easier. Right. And my, my, one of my first coaches uh, taught me how to sell one-to-one, -one, Okay. right? And that was good. But when I didn't do it, I didn't get any results, okay. right? So it's just, I couldn't leverage myself. Now, yeah. one of my mentors uh, taught me the difference between selling one-to-one -one and one-to-many. Uh -huh. That's the beauty and how you can automate 
yourself, replicate yourself right. through a team. Right. So that, that's key in our business. So any failure that stands out from your, your career, from your business, from all these years doing real estate, uh, what did you learn from that? And how do you apply the learning lessons in today's business? Yeah, well, I mean, I think, I think you're not evolving if you're not failing. Right. Um, so I, I think failure is a good thing as long as you mm -hmm. don't hold on to it, you let it go, and, mm -hmm. and you realize there's a lesson here mm -hmm. from that. So yeah, I've had lots of failures. Um, you know, one was a huge deal I was cut out of because I trusted the seller to pay a commission for an unlisted property, and I was mm -hmm. kind of bringing the buyer, and okay. then I came to find out later okay. the buyer had bought the property, and so I said, okay, you know, shame on me. I should right. have, I should have right. protected myself. Right. Um, you know, I could also look back at starting a company Mm -hmm. uh, with an, uh, right. an old business partner, and and that was great. We we both evolved from it, and I learned I don't want to run a small business anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't. I'm stretching myself too thin. What I enjoy doing is selling okay. and bringing in business and marketing. I just want to be a realtor. I don't want to be a broker right. running an office and doing QuickBooks on the side and managing a bunch of people. Yeah, discover so, exactly the why and what you want to do. Yeah, right? yeah. So just going through that process and realizing, and, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't change anything because I am, you know, I appreciate where I am now and and what I have going on right mm -hmm. now because of things that I've gone through to help me get here so now what tools do you use to organize yourself as far as technology tools uh, to te technology or, or any methods that you use uh, in your business to keep yourself organized well my system would probably uh, rattle off like a million different things we have okay. sheets and lists for everything okay and uh, you know obviously we have Dropbox we share we right. share everything right. together in real time mm -hmm. uh, actually I'm proud to say this with Sotheby's mm -hmm. there's a, a great system out there called App Files. Yes. Uh -huh. And uh, I was using that before. Okay. And Sotheby's is now using that. I kind of introduced that okay. humbly. I want to okay. say, uh, <laughs> okay. introduced that to, to Sotheby's and said, you guys have to use this. I mean, App it file. revolutionized okay. my business. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that was the cleanest way. So it's, it's awesome. I mean, I have it on my phone, okay. my iPad, my tablet, my computer. Very good to know. In real okay. time, everything is there. So that mm -hmm. has been by far the number one technology tool uh, to and keep me organized. And, and what advice would you give a new agent that is getting started in the business. So let's say, Ben, you've been very successful. I'm new in the business. Just got my real estate license. What are the key two, two or three things that I should do to become as successful as you are? Yeah. Well, I think first of all, I I have so much more that I want to achieve. I mean, okay. I'm I'm still the same way. A new agent is growing right. from this to this. I'm growing from this to this. You know, in the same way. And so right. I'm always trying to find new things. But for somebody brand new in the industry, I would say, you know, find a mentor, find right. maybe a team that they can join, right. that they can start getting some mm -hmm. business from, because as in, as with me, I have a lot more deals than I can handle. You know, I'm blessed to have that going on right now, so I have to leverage, right. and I have to be able to bring people in. Yeah. And I, I know enough to know that they don't need to work with me, they just right. want to work with a certain level of service. Right. So if I can train my team to kind of do things the way I do it, they just want professional service right. at the end of the day, and, and accountability and you know, people that are trustworthy as well. Um, so I would say find a mentor if you can mm -hmm. and write a business plan oh, and be specific. And, right. You know, what are the right. three or four ways that you're going to bring in business right. and be like specific about right. it and how much money are you going to spend and how much time are you going to give those things. Right. And, you know, just, I think a lot of people think they know their business plan in their head, right. but when you, you write it down, to write it you got to write it down. Exactly. Now the final question before we go, because I know you're a busy person, uh, one piece of advice for an experienced agent. Well, I would say if there's a, listen, it, in the luxury side, uh -huh. we deal with a lot of egos. Okay. And I would say with within the luxury real estate market, there are, you know, you run across realtors who just, they're very successful, they make right. a lot of money. Right. Um, I don't know how balanced their lives are okay. in some cases, because I don't, I would look at them and say probably there's some, some uh -huh. balance missing. Right. But I would say if we could all just remove egos, we don't need more egos in a transaction. <laughs> you have a, um, a luxury buyer and a luxury seller. Buyer and not seller, yeah. So let's just come together and, and like find a way to make it happen. Right. Um, and, and I would say, you know, th that, that I say kind of half kidding, but, right. but it's true. Um, the other thing really I would say is focus more on the referral network because the referrals for me have brought me business in South Florida, right. listings and buyers, mm -hmm. and have brought me a lot of uh, passive income or right. supplemental income that I wasn't forecasting for the right. year because of uh, business that I've helped right. generate for them. Right. And it's just, it's amazing. I mean, it's a great network to have. So build that referral network. Ben, uh, it's been a, a short interview. But what a great, great insights you've given us. Uh, I really appreciate the time. Uh, the footnotes where we're, uh, we're going to put in, in our site are going to be unbelievable. Good, good. I truly appreciate the time. No, uh, I appreciate you, you having me on. It's awesome. Yeah. Thank you for having us in your beautiful Sotheby's offices in, in Coral Gables. Anytime, okay. anytime. Thank you very much. Till the next episode, make it a very, very productive day. Take care, guys.